Madam Clerk, next item, please. Item C, Economic Development Incentive Loan Agreement with Apex Engineering International, LLC. Good morning, morning Commissioner. Sheryl Breathitt, Economic Developer. And indeed, it is a uh, blessing to be here again today. Uh, I'd like to just bring to your attention Apex Engineering International, LLC. Apex is an engineering and manufacturing company specializing in the key commercial, military, and business jet industry. Uh, parent company of Apex is H.M. Dunn Aerial Systems, and Dunn provides engineering design support to fabrication, complex machining, sheet metal fabrication, complex composite manufacturing, in-house processing, and complete assembly capabilities to the aerospace industry. Currently, it occupies 305,000 square feet between two facilities here in Wichita. First location being 1804 West 2nd Street, that's Apex location, and the 4201 South 119th Street, which is a Dunn location. Dunn currently also has locations in Euless, Texas, and St. Louis, Missouri. Dunn has recently won New York new work on the Cessna CJ4 line and is contemplating moving that work to Wichita from a Nova Scotia facility operated by another company. Concurrently, in order to gain operating efficiency, Dunn is considering relocating machine work from its Euless and St. Louis facilities to Wichita. Finally, it is considering expanding production capacity by adding new metal processing equipment in order to secure additional contracts from the aviation OEMs here in town. We're asking of approval of the loan agreement in the amount of $90,000 at this time and to do this work here in Wichita. In return, uh, the company will add 108 new jobs to the existing 168 at the Second Street facility. The average wage for the new jobs will be $35,363, with the average of all jobs of 49597 Companies NACE um, of uh, 39186 so it exceeds that. As an alternative, instead of relocating the work to the Wichita facility, Dunn could obtain operating efficiencies by moving the work to one of the companies uh, the other facilities in Texas or Missouri. Funding consideration proposed $90,000 loan to Apex will be provided from funds budgeted for economic development incentives and the economic development program at the transfer from economic development contingency account. Uh, our return on our investment does meet our benchmark return proposed of 1.3 for each $1 cost that we provide the company. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that each company that I've had the opportunity since working with Cedric County as the economic developer, that every company we provided assistance to, that I also have the opportunity to follow up with them, to stay with them from A to Z, and to make sure that they're keeping their commitment. And if for any reason it does not seem that they're not keeping their commitment or there's some shortfalls, then we do hold them accountable according to the agreement. And we have shown uh, in previous history from, with regards to even clawbacks that um, everyone does their end of the deal. So make sure we're dotting all of our I's and crossing all of our T's. So that being said, we would ask that the uh, commission would approve the resolution and authorize the chairman to sign. At this time, we we'll take any questions. We do have in our attendance from the company, Mr. David Holter, who is the vice president and general manager, along with David McClure. All right, thank you. We do have a question from Commissioner Peter John. Good morning. Uh, my question is this. Uh, my recollection is approximately four or five years ago, we had a similar request from Apex Engineering and was brought before this commission uh, for a similar forgivable loan. Could you go through and walk me through that history, please, Mr. Breathitt? Yeah, we did. We sure did. As a matter of fact, it was for the amount of $225,000. And then uh, after two months into the period, I guess the company was looking at trying to do some reorganization. They decided that they did not want to continue in the process, and they returned at the principal of that amount that was provided to them back to Central County in its fullest. And it was about 2010, 2009? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I wanted to put that on the record because at that time uh, I, had, I was one of the commissioners, and I believe 
I think the entire commission, I may be wrong on that, but I think the entire commission voted in support of that, uh, in support of that forgivable loan at that time. And, um, I have the reasons that were provided at that time are very similar to the reasons that you've brought in front of us today. But a number of other things have changed since then. And, uh, um, I was very much interested in terms of getting, getting at least uh, the history placed on the record. Um, let me, uh, I have, I have some other comments, but if there are other questions from other commissioners, I'd be happy to, happy to wait. And I'd also be interested. I don't know if anyone in the public wants to testify on this issue, but I'd be interested in hearing if there's anyone in the public who'd like to hear speak, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Shardell, have you been uh, advised if anyone wants to make a comment? Does anyone want to speak? Yes, uh, Mr. Rod Holter, Vice President, would like to make a comment. Please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioners, for considering uh, our request. We're aggressively working to pull jobs back into Wichita. We did a handshake on a deal last week that brings jobs back from Korea. The, uh, the Citation 4 job that we were talking about earlier is work from Nova Scotia that's coming here. And we're working on another bid right now for work out of, out of Tulsa, out of, out, of, out of state. So we're working very, very hard to grow our business. And it takes a lot of funds to grow the business. And there's a lot of investment and equipment and upfront costs and to bring those jobs here. And, and that's why we're here asking. We're asking for some help. Uh, we do provide good, solid wages for our employees and medical and uh, uh, health care, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good place to work. And I've been there about a year now, and I've, I've worked with the OEMs in town, and I've, so I'm experiencing the, this side of the business, and it's, uh, it's much more difficult. It's a much tighter, uh, tighter funding, and, uh, and what I am seeing is there's other people that do want us, and that's, that's, they approach us independently and say, would you consider our, our state? And, uh, and uh, we don't want to leave Wichita. Our folks, our, our team members are good here, and, uh, and we want to continue to grow and, and build a good, substantial business base here in Wichita. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. And, and these uh, funds primarily are to help cover moving costs? Is that right? Yeah. We, and one of, the, one of the jobs that we acquire out of, out of uh, St. Louis, uh, we're, we're buying equipment from the OEM, or the Tier 1, and and uh, we have to move that equipment here, and it's going to it's going to cost far in excess of what we're asking for, what we're able to ask for. But it's going to cost us money to move it, and then uh, pour foundations and and set them up. Yes. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. We have a question from Commissioner Skelton. Okay. No, I just want to make a comment. I uh, really want to give you my heartfelt thanks for keeping those jobs here in Wichita mm -hmm. and moving some uh, uh, that are not currently in Wichita mm -hmm. to Wichita, adding to our economy, adding yes. to our tax base and employment base, and certainly the hopeful su the further success of your company, sir. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, another comment here. Sure, yes, Commissioners. Gary Schmidt, Intrust Bank, uh, Chair of GWDC also. Uh, I just want to reiterate what Sherdell said, that Apex has the opportunity to move to other locations. Uh, I've been told that uh, Charleston offered to build a plant for them and help them move equipment and also provide training. Uh, what they're talking about is bringing jobs from St. Louis and equipment from St. Louis, I think, that also is going to provide additional jobs in our community, additional investment in our community. Uh, there's also a plant in Texas that has the excess capacity that they can move these jobs to. But I think for numerous reasons they've decided Wichita is their location. Like they said, that's, that's where their people are and they feel very comfortable. One other thing, a little off the subject, I just came from the American Red Cross uh, Heroes Breakfast this morning. And uh, Ron was there and they, they basically was a sponsor for one of the heroes. So the other thing I like to see whenever we support uh, investments in companies is their participation in our local community. And I just want to say Apex was there and, and it really showed me some character for this company that uh, sometimes we don't see. So uh, I would encourage you to uh, support the request and uh, bring more jobs into our community for a better future and a good investment for, for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Gary.
Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Gary Plummer. I'm with the Wichita Metro Chamber of Commerce, and it's a pleasure to be here today and speak in favor of this project uh, for your consideration. Having lived in Wichita for three years, one of the amazing things I see about this community and this metro area are the number of companies like Apex Engineering that are out there creating new jobs, bringing new wealth to our community, and they're not necessarily the household names that we've all become accustomed to here in the air capital, but they're out there in scores of companies, and it's, it's really a pleasure to work with companies like Apex. You know, in the last 10 years, this company has paid $949,000 in property tax. Of that, $231,557 has been the share that has gone to Sedgwick County. And this proposal that you have before you today for the forgivable loan has a discounted cost over a 10-year period to the county of about $87,000. But during that 10-year period, uh, consistent with your 1.3 uh, ratio that you like to uh, adhere to, the county is going to receive $120,501 back in revenue. And that's a $33,000, $544 profit. So I think sometimes it's difficult to understand what that 1.3 means, but that spells it out pretty well, that this is a good deal for the county, and it helps attract new jobs and new investment to Wichita, and uh, we would urge that you support it this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Plummer. Mr. Plummer? Uh, we have a for question. question from Commissioner Peter John. Yes. Mr. Plummer, thank you for coming down and speaking with us this morning. Uh, I did want to visit with you uh, publicly here since you're in support of the proposal before us today and ask you because one of the issues that came up recently, the Chamber was in support of the recent city sales tax hike. Am I correct in that? That's correct. And part of that was to be used for these sorts of uh, uh, incentives, correct? That is correct. No. Um, I'm going to Yesterday's Wichita Eagle featured an article that uh, you didn't mention any names, but you said uh, attacking local businesses for growing jobs uh, in Wichita, and you referred to them uh, some anti-business rants or branding Wichita with an anti-business climate. Would you do you want to be more specific in terms of as in exactly who you were referring to and and what what's going on that you, that concerns you enough that uh, you and Mr. Roselle wrote a column in yesterday's Wichita in the, in the newspaper. Thank you, Commissioner, for that question. Uh, I don't want to get personal and name names this morning, but there are people in this community who make make a regular business to go in front of bodies like this in the city council and drag the good names of companies through the mud for uh, taking advantage of state national local programs that help grow jobs in our community and uh, we have probably been remiss in not standing up and and uh, telling the other side of the story in a little bit more aggressive fashion that's what the letter was intended to do and uh, we're making a commitment to do that more in the future well let me ask you because I, I'm going to go back and I wouldn't refer to the Wall Street Journal as an anti anti business article uh, anti business publication but uh, in their editorial on March 6th of 2012, entitled A Wichita Shocker, uh, and subtitled You Can Beat City Hall, uh, the first sentence says, local politicians like to get in bed with local business, and taxpayers are usually the losers. So three cheers for a voter revolt in Wichita, Kansas, last week that shows such sweetheart deals can be defeated. And then talked about the Wichita City Council approving a subsidy for a hotel project downtown that uh, the voters rejected at a referendum by about the same margin the voters rejected the sales tax last month. Uh, I was curious, uh, I'll be curious to see if the Wall Street Journal comes forward with another editorial uh, on this, but I, I'd like your comments in terms of, you know, there's a lot of concern about subsidies and at the national level we've had terrible debacles. The Solyndra subsidy a fiasco was one of many at the national level where government and politicians and there's this inside relationship between the politically powerful and often large business that, that receive and, and uh, benefit from subsidies. And I'm concerned about differentiating this. Uh, I, I hear from citizens who say, hey, there was a message sent by the voters last month with over 60% rejecting 
the sales tax with a large part of that money to be used for these types of programs and i'd really like to get your comments on the record concerning that election results and the sixty some percent of the voters who said no well uh... we certainly respect the uh... wishes of the voters they they sent a message about where they stood on this issue you know if we could change the system on a national basis which i think was probably most of what the wall street journal was referring to uh... we would we would sign on uh... and try to uh... find a new model for economic development in this country but it's the model that's being managed around the country right now and uh... we don't think that it's uh... a good decision for wichita uh... just based on principle to say we're not going to compete with these other communities and and the way they do economic development we feel like in the long run uh... it's better for this community if we do compete and we were hoping that with more resources we could have more projects like the one you have before you this morning which i repeat to you is a good investment that's going to make a return to the county it's not an expense and so uh... Although we honor the uh, the decisions of the voters, we still are in the business of economic development, and we're going to try to work within the system that that we have to work within and try to be successful. Last week, the Governor's Council of Economic Advisors uh, got a report, received a report indicating that industrial jobs, only 600 had been brought back from the 29,000 that had been lost going back to the Great Recession of 2009. Um, we've been following this same paradigm in terms of what everybody else is doing around the country in terms of trying to recruit jobs and we've got a big problem in the sense that Washington has had their boot on the throats of a lot of businesses here in uh, Kansas in general and Sedgwick County in particular when it comes to uh, aircraft in general and the business jet industry in particular and I would be interested in getting your comments in terms of you know why the paradigm that you're talking about has been in place we've been following it actually going well before the economic downturn of 2008 2009 and how do you think that this is going to work better in the future or are we just going to do more of the same well uh, commissioner knowing what a fan you are of Ronald Reagan I'm, I'm going to use a Ronald Reagan quote this morning to respond to that uh, it was Ronald Reagan who said status quo is Latin for the mess that we're in and we're quite frankly not satisfied with the status quo and we're looking for new ways to do business differently uh, indicative of that is our partnership with Wichita State, the city, the county, Wichita Downtown Development, REAP and others that are working on the blue print for regional economic growth. We have to look at the clusters that are going to be successful in our economy in the future and help them grow and help keep them in Wichita. So we're always open to new ideas. We're not, we're not stuck in a system from the past, but we also recognize the reality of what it takes to compete in this environment today, and we're going to do the, the very best we can with the resources that we have. Well, I, I proposed an alternate approach that would, I think, benefit everyone, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But, Mr. Plummer, I want to thank you for coming down and testifying before us this morning and at least beginning or maybe expanding uh, the dialogue that I think got started at least during the campaign this year on the uh, uh, city's one-cent sales tax. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a comment from Commissioner Skelton. Question. Mr. Plummer. Mr. Plummer, we have one more question. Gary, when when you're looking at the, an EDX like this, what kind of factors are, are evaluated? And uh, tell me, you know, basically how you quantitate the uh, cost-benefit analysis. Very good question, Commissioner. Uh, are we going to have more people speak? We have someone in the room who can speak better to that than I, and that's Tim Chase, who is the president of GWDC. Could I defer that question? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to answer that question? Anybody else? No, go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners. Tim Chase, President of the Greater Wichita Economic Development Coalition. Uh, uh, Commissioner Skelton, uh, I'll start with uh, a uh, explanation of your question or answer to your question. Um, 
there are all kinds of forces in the economy, good and bad, and we try to take into consideration as many of those as we can document with a project. As an example, uh, the number of jobs that are created, the capital investment that goes into it, the net increase in, in uh, government funding, and the personal income, the increase in personal incomes are sort of the four big uh, measurements that we we uh, always put in any project, but the uh, actual model that is used by the uh, CEDBR uh, at WSU takes into consideration all of those things, and then it looks at some very minute measurements. And as, as an example, um, companies are asked how many folks are going to visit Wichita during the course of business, and how many room nights might those folks uh, consume uh, on an annual basis. Uh, and so they take a look at that and they take a look at how much income the uh, governments will receive from those visits. So it's a combination of very large measures and also it goes very deeply into every aspect of what a project like this might have in terms of a ripple effect. There's direct and there's indirect impacts. And the direct impact is the job, the 108 jobs that we're talking about today. And when that job is, is filled in the economy, it because it exports the product that it's making, another job is created in support of that. And the economists would tell you uh, that that's not just a one for one, that depending on what the initial company is doing, it could be one to one and a half, could be one to one two, could be as many as one to three additional jobs in the community. Is that an answer to your question? That's a partial answer. I think it's pretty deep, but uh, that, I think, uh, explains the big picture. Okay. Thank you. Um, a couple of things, if I might uh, add to this. Um, I think that this is a great example of how the economic development process it works. First of all, um, your GWDC team uh, spends a great percentage of the time, a vast majority of their time, working with companies we have here today. It's often thought that we are uh, only involved with the recruitment of new companies into the area, and we all certainly uh, appreciate that when it happens. But the real rubber meets the road by taking good care of what we have here today. And this is a great example of that. Um, uh, Commissioner Peter John, uh, your comment uh, as we began uh, talking here uh, saw, talked about a, a, um, a similar uh, incentive that was granted to the company, and that as things unfolded, that incentive was repaid. If, if every time we came before you with a deal, it was a guarantee, then you might, you might wonder, well, why um, was that project, why did it uh, did not unfold the way we guessed it would? But but the same token, if we had a guarantee well, why would we come asking for money? If the company guarantees that they're going to execute in a certain way, then it would be irresponsible to ask for uh, the government to uh, think in terms of uh, helping the company actually execute uh, on what they are trying to do. Does that uh, address your concerns? Commissioner Peter John. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, my concerns are, are broad and in a number of areas, and you've touched on one of them that's very significant to me because uh, I believe that the model that's used by Wichita State is a relatively straightforward uh, input-output model uh, for generating that 1.3 uh, number that uh, Mr. Breathitt mentioned in his earlier testimony. I was curious, do you have a copy of that, uh, of that econo econometric model? I do not, but it's part of the package that uh, is presented. Uh, I, and if, if you, oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I, the reason I'm asking, I've been trying to get my hands on, on an actual copy of that model, and I've been told it's proprietary, and 
and uh, and uh, and I thought maybe if you had a copy, you might be able to help me. But but uh, if you don't, uh, I, I certainly you 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 haven't you're you're as successful as I have in terms of actually having it. I, I get the results, um, and uh, uh, and I appreciate your comments concerning the fact that there is a certain amount of risk and uncertainty, especially in our contemporary business climate. But having said that. Uh, I think that the main cause for risk and uncertainty in today's business climate is a function of what we, and I'm not talking just about the county, because mm -hmm. actually I think the county is relatively, compared to the other bodies, we're much better, but other levels of government. And, uh, and whether it's negative, uh, whether it's unfunded mandates onto the private sector, whether it's higher level of taxes, whether it's uncertainty, I hear articles now about what's called lawfare, a combination of warfare and the law, where you basically are using um, the law as a tool to uh, bludgeon your business competition. Or, and we have a whole major industry in Southern California right now that's being under a cyber attack, which 20, 30 years ago, who would have even cyber attack? Come on. But... The, the risk and uncertainty of business is certainly higher today than I can think of at any time. So um, I appreciate you coming down and uh, uh, giving your insight, and, uh, and I appreciate uh, your comments before us this morning. Thank you. Okay, very well. One last final uh, comment, uh, and you're more than welcome to have the results of the uh, study that is done for every project, as I mentioned. Um, in, included in every one of those is another number that we really don't take any time or, or I don't think we take enough time to appreciate and that's what's called an economic impact to the regional economy. We stay very narrowly focused on the county is going to invest a dollar and uh, for every dollar they invest they're going to get a dollar and thirty cents back which is very good accountability for the taxpayers but in addition to that there is also this ripple effect within the community that has a very high economic impact and in this case we're talking about seven point seven million dollars every year that this company has these jobs put into place with this investment. So uh, over the course of the 10 years that this deal is being uh, uh, monitored by uh, Shardell and, and his team, you're talking about a seven, uh, $77 million economic impact to the community, to the regional economy. And I just wanted to share that number because it's not a number that we typically um, think about. Any other questions? I see not. See none. Thank you. Uh, yes, if you'd like to make one more comment. Thank you. Uh, to to uh, Commissioner Skelton's uh, question, when we in, when we go out and market for a new job, and and we're a, we're, a, we're considered a, a super tier two, <clears throat> so our customers are looking for an integrator that builds a value added assembly that goes into a factory. So when we can't possibly do all the parts and pieces and have all the machinery to do everything in that assembly. So the, the jobs that I was talking uh, about uh, before, we actually share that work because we can't do it all. And we share that work in Wichita. We try to keep it close. One of the, one of the jobs that, that we had won from a, a local large, uh, large company, uh, the machinings, the large heavy machinings are currently machined in California. We're working with a local supplier, a smaller shop than ours, a friend of mine, and he is going to invest and buy two machines to machine those parts and employ people here. So there's other, that ripple effect that comes out of, out of the work that we do is, is much greater than what happens inside AEI's doors. It's also what happens with our current uh, local supply base. Okay. okay thank you for that comment. Thanks. So I think uh, one more speaker, Mr. Todd. <coughs> Good morning, uh, Mr. Commission Chairman and members of the Board of Sedby County Commissioners. My name is John Todd. I live at 1559 North Payne Avenue here in Wichita, Kansas. Thank you for allowing me to share with you 
some thoughts on what my philosophical philosophical thoughts on being a substitute with you today. We, Commissioner Carl Peterjohn, uh, mentioned a couple of uh, uh, valid issues. That uh, one was in 2012 on the Ambassador Hotel. Uh, rather than read the article that was published, and rather than read my testimony, which includes a large part of, of this article, uh, I would like to submit the article uh, and my testimony in full for the record. That would be well. Thank you. Would the uh, the on the ho the Ambassador Hotel. Uh, the I want to make a couple of comments. This is part of this article. Uh, was exempting the Ambassador Hotel from, a, from the hotel tax and at least $10 million in other subsidies. The measure was sold in the name of jobs and urban redevelopment, and the local power brokers were all for it, the Chamber of Commerce, the political class, and the city newspaper. It says that for the voters, the core issue is fairness. What Americans seem to want most from government these days is equal treatment. I'm not going to read the rest of the article. I, re I might remind the Commission of the recent November 4th, 2014 Wichita sales tax increase referendum that voters defeated by a margin of 62% to 38% that this referendum included an economic development and jobs incentive package. It doesn't appear to me that your constituents are in any mood for continuing what they view as unfair business incentives. I believe, uh, and uh, I wanted to uh, show, and I'll leave this with you too, Gary Varvel of the Indianapolis Star newspaper does some interesting political cartooning, and he shows these two what appears to be very wealthy individuals sitting in their wingback chairs at the club or wherever, and the caption says, from one, one is asking the other, which government road earned you your first million? I'm, I'm afraid that's the view that a lot of the public has on these incentive programs. And I think there really is need to, to have some, what I consider constructive public dialogue at, at relating to this issue. I believe your constituents will favorably we respond favorably if you pursue a policy of providing economic op equality of opportunity for all citizens, everyone. This means limiting the role of government to that of providing the framework for equality, for equally protecting the rights and properties of all citizens through the rule of law and not by acting as a participant in any activity that places it in a position of granting a competitive advantage to one group of citizens to the exclusion of others. I appreciate you bringing Ronald Reagan's uh, quote. I'd like to essentially conclude with one that I think is appropriate here today. Quote from Ronald Reagan, We are learning that the way to prosperity is not more bureaucracy and redistribution of wealth, but less government and more freedom for the entrepreneur and for the creativity of the individual. End quote. This is a no noble policy that you should adopt here in Sedgwick County. I believe it exemplifies the limited government principles of our founders. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Skelton. John, how are you today? I am excellent. How about you, sir? I'm, I'm well. I'm yeah. got 33 days left. <laughs> You're a short timer. Well, you know, I've enjoyed your company over the last 10 years. You Dave, Dave Bayus told me the other day that uh, uh, I wish him a long life, and he said he wanted to live till till Kellogg was completed. It's, well, he might do that, you know. Uh, you know, you've had a lot of passion in, in your uh, numerous uh, appearances before local governing bodies. Uh, you know, you, you uh, like to... Keep your mind on what the voters think. Uh, you respect yes. constituent views. You have a lot of passion and conviction in what you say. And as I said, you've been a regular for 10 years. And 
uh, you definitely have a pointed philosophy. Uh, you know, and I've had a lot of fun with you, and I'm going to miss you, actually. I'm still in town. Um, <laughs> well, I got a quote now, I, here. I, I, as a retired person, I do reserve the option of, of, of getting up by the crack of noon. Well, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm not going to make any comments on that one, but I respect that. Uh, um, well, I want to tell you thanks, old buddy. And, you know, one of these days I'd Thank sure you. like to see you step forward and run for local public office. So uh, with that in mind, maybe we'll see you sometime down the road. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. I really appreciate that. Uh, I wanted to make an appeal here today. Uh, I, I really think there is a need for constructive public dialogue relating to this issue, and I would challenge both sides to uh, to get involved and provide speakers that have both points of view. And uh, it's interesting to me sometimes. You know, I, I have a lot of fun uh, in my role as a retired civic activist. Uh, I, I go into the camp of many people that I disagree with, uh, and it's really fascinating when you when you enter into constructive dialogue to find out that you actually have a lot of common common views that you can share. And I really think that uh, this issue of economic development incentives is is something that needs to be vetted thoroughly, and that there is really a wonderful opportunity for us to do that in our community before we move forward with with uh, massive subsidies for anyone. And, uh, and you know, I really truly, truly believe that, that if incentives work, that uh, they, if they work for one, they work best for when they're offered to everyone in the form of low taxes, less regulation, and the, the, the economic vitality and the entrepreneurial spirit of our community is vibrant. It's here. I am a very positive about it. And we can we can we can see economic uplift that that is unimaginable if we if we release that. But if we continue the failed model that we've been following without the dialogue, I'm, I'm afraid we're going to head down the same path that we've been on, we've been on. That's all I have to say. Thank Mr. You. Peter John. Well, thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Thank I, you. I, I, um, I want you to clarify. It is before but, noon, you know. <laughs> But <laughs> up early this morning. Um, would you like you to clarify for the record that I'm going to take your comments that you are opposed to, the, to, to this item before the commission this morning, but I'd like you to clarify in terms of, your, it sounds to me your opposition is in principle and not particularly focused on Apex Engineering International in particular. <laughs> My interest is not to make this personal. Uh, I ab absolutely appreciate Apex Engineering, the, their, their being in, in Wichita, and the positive things that they're doing. Uh, so this is not a personal uh, assault on them. Uh, my, my, my comments are philosophical. Uh, if, not, if you have $90,000, or I don't know what the, what the grant, what the forgivable loan is in the Treasury, Let's reduce taxes for everyone in our community. That, I can see great economic uplift by doing that. You'll have constituents out there and people who, who will, will appreciate it. I think you can see widespread, and it's, the, the amount we're talking about here is, is not the amount, but the, the principle of low, low, low taxes and less, less government regulation for everyone. We can create an environment that Wichita absolutely is second to none. And, and uh, as, you know, we have the entrepreneurial spirit. We have a long history of it. So, and I, I am not anti-business. I'm really pro-business, and I'm pro Wichita. Uh, I'm a I'm a great fan, and I think the reason why we need the, the dialogue that I'm suggesting is that we need we we need to look at some things that we can look at together and mutually support and and work towards the uplift. We, we can be a model for the rest of the country if we get it right here. I appreciate your comments, but I'd like to, if, if, if I may, uh, add for the record, uh, Mr. Todd, you mentioned you were retired. What did you do before you were retired? I spent 30 years as a self-employed real estate broker developer. So you were a small businessman, basically. Yes, sir, I was. Okay. Uh, did you serve in any business organizations while you were uh, uh, working? Uh, Wichita Association of Realtors, Kansas Association of Realtors, National Association of Realtors, 
I uh, became back in, active in the Wichita Independent Business Association. Those to name a few. You were on their board, I believe, weren't you? I, I've been on their board of directors, yes, sir. And you're still active in other political groups. I saw a newspaper article that mentioned that you were uh, an officer in a local political group, uh, according to the Wichita Eagle. I really would like to clarify that uh, I'm standing here today not talking as an officer of any group. I'm talking as an individual private citizen. So the views I express here today belong to me. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I don't see anyone else asking to speak. And, uh, Commissioners, is there any other um, comment here? Commissioner Peter John. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, because I, I want to second the comments. Apex International is a great corporate citizen and it's a great company. But I'm going to quote from an article, and I'm going to ask uh, with the Chairman and my colleagues' indulgence, and I hope they'll listen to me a little bit. Uh, this is from an editorial that was written by one of the most and arguably the most successful businessman in our country. It appeared August 6, 2014 in USA Today and uh, folks that know me, I'm not the best at filing, but I managed to dig this out of, of my files and I'm going to quote from this article. This businessman made the comment and I think it's very relevant for where we are today and why my vote today is going to reflect some of the opinions expressed here and the alternate paradigm that I want to suggest that I've been advocating for, I will continue to advocate, and as long as I have the privilege of sitting at this bench, continuing to push for if we have the success. But this article on how to really turn the economy is the title of the article, and if I may quote, today opportunities for such work, and the work here is improving the economy, are not what they should be. We need a different approach focused less on politics and more on basic principles. First, we need to encourage principled entrepreneurship. Companies should earn profits by creating value for customers and acting with integrity, the opposite of today's rampant cronyism. Too many businesses focus on getting subsidies and mandates from government rather than creating value for customers. According to George Mason University's Mercatus Center, such favors cost us more than $11,000 per person in lost GDP, gross domestic product, every year, a $3.6 trillion economic hit. Compounding the problem are destructive regulations affecting whether and how business invests and employees work. Federal rules cost America an estimated $1.86 trillion per year, calculated the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Now this article goes on to talk about the government failure, as I view it, in terms of our effort to turning the economy around, and concludes with our government's decades-long top-down approach to job creation has failed. Its policies have made our problems worse, leaving tens of millions chronically on or underemployed, millions of whom have given up even ever finding meaningful work. In doing so, our government has not only thwarted real job creation, it has also reduced the supply and quality of goods and services that make people's lives better and undermine the culture required to sustain a free society. When it comes to creating opportunities for all, we can do much better. It's time to let people seek opportunities that best seek their talents for business, uh, that best suit their talents. For business to forsake cronyism and for government to get out of the way." Unquote. The author of this editorial from USA Today, page 8A, August 6, 2014. Charles Koch, the chairman and CEO of Koch Industries. Now, I cite it because I do think there's an alternate paradigm. It was mentioned earlier that uh, Apex paid 949000 in property taxes over 10 years. And I believe it was over 10 years. Is that correct? Um, I put a proposal out to reduce property taxes for every business in this community. But not only for every business, for every citizen, for every property taxpayer in this community. Young or old, rich or poor, they'd have the opportunity, if the county got out of the property tax business, the property tax bills would be reduced by approximately a quarter. I've been pushing for that in the past. I'm pushing for it today, and my vote on this issue today will reflect the fact that I want to give a bigger benefit to Apex International and to every other 
entrepreneurial oriented business, property owner, whether they're large or small, in this community. I also want to emphasize for the record that, and to try and convince my colleagues, that we've got a paradigm in front of us that we've been following. But everybody else in the country is following it too. We're all like a bunch of crawdads in the bucket trying to work out for the next big deal that's coming down the road. I think we need a new approach. And that new approach is Sedgwick County starting a party. We're going to get the county out of the property tax business, replace it with sales tax. Instead of having the sales tax go for spending, we're going to eliminate the county's property tax. Now I'm going to mention, Labette County voted on retaining an existing sales tax that's being used for lowering their property taxes. Now I'd, I'd like to go a step further than where they've gone. The voters overwhelmingly approved retaining that sales tax in the election last month, unlike what happened here. But if we follow a new paradigm and try a unique marketing approach, saying, look, Sedgwick County is starting a party, and each and every one of you sitting here and who can hear my voice are welcome to come join us. A unique marketing proposition. We're going to be cutting and eliminating the county's property tax. And I firmly believe that based on where the voters sent a clear message November 4, 2014. Now, I think they're looking at us at the elected side and saying, hey, how many times do we have to send it? They sent it two years ago in 2012. The city of Wichita voters again did. And I think that's true not only for the city of Wichita, but I think it's true in this county and across the state. Property taxes are too high. They need to be reduced. There's a way we can do this and still fund the critical functions that Sedgwick County provides today. And so my vote today, Apex is a great company, followed them, obviously. But my vote today is going to be for lowering property taxes for all. The proposal today I'm looking at $90,000, 10 years, 108 jobs. By my calculation, that's $83 per employee per year. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a deal breaker one way or the other. And looking at the big picture, what we have been trying and what we have been doing has not worked. The Governor's Council of Economic Advisors shows that when you've got, we've lost 29,000 manufacturing jobs. It's important to try and industrial jobs, I believe was the word they used. Many of them are manufacturing. We need to strengthen our local economy. We need to strengthen our state's economy. We need to get Washington to get off, get off the uh, the, the necks of our businesses, but that's a bigger discussion for the other day. All I can do is try and push for where this county needs to go, and so my vote today is going to reflect the fact that I'd like to give Apex a property tax break and all the other businesses and property taxpayers in this community a property tax break. But uh, I cannot support this agreement in front of us today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we've had a lot of discussion, uh, philosophy, uh, perspective, uh, ideology, uh, all over the map. The issue before us has to do with a forgivable loan. Commissioner Skelton. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I find this uh, proposal in front of us is a great deal for the community. We're going to add over 100 jobs here. Those employees that are going to be brought in from outside this community are going to go out and buy goods and services. They're going to buy real estate. They're going to purchase durable goods. They're going to add economic value. They're going to strengthen our economy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the resolution and authorize the chairman to sign the agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Commissioner Peter John. No. Commissioner Skelton. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Chairman Unruh. Aye. Shardell, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Gentlemen and all those who uh, participated, thank you. Next item, please. <coughs> item D, Exploration Place Presentation. <coughs> 